Zach. I always shave my shit, so I don't know. Now I don't have to. Like, and if I go out in public, I just put a hat on, and that's it. You got the Hulk Hogan <laughs> going on. I got some wild shit going on, man. Uh, I you said you got some what? Some wild shit. Like, oh, I thought you my said shit looks shit. like. I was about to say. No, 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 no. It's my shit is like kind of crazy, so I'm just letting it uh grow. But it just looks. Take it this looks shit nice. off real quick, bro. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm chilling. No, nah, I'm good. All right, y'all ready to start? We uh we already started recording. All right, cool. All right, it's whatever. All right, yeah. What's going on? This is a highly advised podcast. This is uh you got Lau, Lau over here. You got a uh, Spence up there. Yo, <laughs> what's going on with y'all? Spence, follow me at Saint Kitch S T dot K I T C H. It's not hard to spell. I cook really good food. Check me out sometime, and I'm a pretty dope dude. You want to go? Se- <laughs> you want to go second, Nigel? Uh, follow me on Instagram, Relaxing Jackson. I'm loud, but on Instagram, I'm big cozy, too cozy. And okay. The two spelled T O O, and the cozy is with a Z, not an S. Just for people who might mistaken the spelling. Okay. All right. So I was thinking, you know, a good place to start off would be uh, let's talk about six nine. You know what I mean? Might as well. Yeah. So uh, today, whoa, I might be late. On, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say today. I was gonna say today. I, I seen something early this morning, and I might be late to it. But um, okay. I seen that he's gonna be dropping apparently two albums: one like an English version and a Spanish version. It's it's weird. Like he's trying to go like straight back to it. You know what I mean? And like to me personally, it's a uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how many people uh, actually give him mind. You know what I mean? And what he what he's actually gonna be like as an artist coming back out. Because is he going to be on his uh, fuck everybody type shit again? Or is he going to be, you know, humble 6 9 you know? Nah, I think, honestly, he's he's probably going to be humble. I think, if anything, he's going to make an album. His first album, if, if anybody's willing to listen, is going to be, it's probably going to be, like, the rap album is going to be one of those, oh, this is what I was doing, how my life's been over the past year or two. Probably trying to make his... Re- probably trying to say like yo why he did what he did and then like the spanish album is what's going to really make him just an international star again honestly like the the song he had with uh what was his name anguela it's like and little something yeah yeah that video like apparently that video has like a billion views on youtube damn like yeah like he's gonna he's still gonna be a star i just i honestly i think I think the label is pricing for that. So, because let's be real, he's on the shot clock. Shot clock, bro. Hmm. Every day, every day that he's still alive, people are counting. Like, cause this this movie isn't over now that he's back home. Like, I don't think I don't really think people are gonna be. At, I think a lot of people are gonna get tested in terms of how receptive they were gonna be of him. I I think. So me personally, I don't think anything is gonna be like physically happen to him and um if it if it does happen i feel like it's it should happen sooner than later and not happen 10 12 months down the road i feel like that um i mean he doesn't have the hood behind him no more you know what i mean but he still has an audience that's willing to still listen to whatever he's going to come out with but i feel like people are only going to tune in if he's going to troll and i don't know I don't know if he's going to be able to troll with whatever. I don't know the conditions of his early release or anything like nah, that. So I don't know if that he's going to be able to or not. Oh, he can't troll. Yeah, on his early release, it's, it's, he has to be in with his house, for house arrest. He has to talk to his probation officer, like, I think, once every, once every day. Um, he has his obligations are also to no, no trolling, pretty much. And of course, I guess somehow it's from what it sounds like part of it's going to be like these albums coming out as soon as possible. The labels want him to put the label, the the albums out as soon as they can in case because it's like an insurance policy at this point. Right, right. 
So he's going to be able, he's still, he's not going to be able to troll, quote unquote, but I think trolling is going to be a different context, honestly. Like, okay. what is trolling going to be now? Like, is trolling going to be suck my dick, blah, 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 or is it going to be, oh, let me just make, let me just act fun, let me have a fun time where all, everybody's quarantined. Like, right. He's stuck in the crib. He's stuck in the crib and he's able to be on social media again. So. So it's only a matter of time before he does something that's going to try and grab attention. That's what you're saying. It, yeah, it's not. Course. It won't be him in his uh, traditional form, but it'll just be him in a more like, "Hey, I'm just having fun now." Type one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, he's the luckiest man in the world. Like, he's the luckiest artist in the world. At the end of the day. And I think he's going to embellish on that. Like, you got to think about it. Like, if you go through the situation he went through and then you get to, re- you come back from that, you're going to feel like the luckiest person in the world. And you, and in this case, he can't talk what he was talking before, but he's going to troll. Like, he's on social media already. Like, he's been on Instagram apparently from, I guess he likes some rappers' pictures or some shit like that. So, and letting you know he's active again on social media. He's probably just waiting for his return. Mm. It, it's going to be definitely interesting what his what approach is going to take. And, you know, it's, I mean, I know everybody wants him to be like what he was before he left, as far as like the, you know, trolling and beefing with random rappers and stuff like that. But due to everything going on, you know, it's, for his safety or whatever, or for for him to not like go back in jail, I don't know. He might not do it again. You know, he might he might we might see a new version of him, and I don't know if that's going to really help him or not. But I mean, what we what he went through, you know, to normal people like us, you know, that's life changing experience. You know, but with him, he's getting a lot more money than we are right at least right now, and. You know, so I don't know how, how much this is going to change him as a person. It's just hard to say. It, it's just hard to say how much he really will change because this isn't the first time he's been like, this is probably the most serious he's been in trouble, but he's been in trouble with things like before. I'm not sure if he keeps on getting away with things, how much he'll actually pull back. I'm I'm very curious to see how much he actually makes an effort to not be that person, if any at all, because he might end up being the same six nine that we always saw. Because in reality, he's not in prison, so it's like you, it's hard to tell somebody who got away scot free to stop doing that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you gotta realize, like, I, like I, to me, I don't think he was. He I, he wasn't to me. He wasn't locked up long enough to really change. To be honest. Like, his, literally his, when he was asked, not appealing, but when he was asking for early release, apparently the judge at first was like, nah, because everything, like, not even, well, one, when he was going, when he was trying to get released early, everything that they were saying outside of like, okay, the coronavirus, he hasn't done this, he's a good standing citizen, blah, 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 was the same shit he was saying when he had like the whole rape case or whatever. Or with that, whatever that case was with the underage girl back in the day. Right. Like, oh, I'm a good kid, blah, blah, blah. And even when he had gotten sentencing this time, it was, um, he's a good kid, blah, blah, blah. But the judge was like, hey, you're a good kid, quote unquote, but you're back in my courtroom. And these are the same things you said last time you were here. And right. you, gotta, you gotta think about it. Like, you just be, you became the biggest artist in the world at one moment in time. Yeah. Like, Social media was nothing with you without you at some moment in time. He literally figured out the formula to create a. He figured out the formula for the, for to have a successful career at yeah. the end of the day. And yeah. like, I mean, let's be real. Like, I just don't think I don't think he's gonna. I think his antics will change somewhat, but I think who he is, he's just he's a finesser, at to some degree. Like when yeah. it's all said and done, he just knows how to say okay. I'll do this. Oh, the scum gang stuff isn't working. This wearing blue isn't working. Oh, let's do this video with Gummo. That's the video with Gummo. And it becomes a hit. And I think, Nadja, you said you listened to the thing on Spotify, right? With yeah. 
the podcast thing with him. With Andrew like, Martinez. Yeah, like he even at that moment she was saying like once he realized that the success of Gumbo, he said, "All right, this is the image that I need to have to keep the success going," and it worked. And now he's probably going to just transition into the Latin market. Yeah. Yep. I I could see that. That's a that's a good uh, prediction for real, because like I just don't. I'm not saying that his music career is over, but all the hood shit that he was talking about about, you know, him being a blood and him, you know, hanging who he was hanging with. I just, I can't see that carrying on. You know what I mean? I just, I just don't. I feel like he, his music will be, I'm not saying it's going to change from rap to some, you know, Latin auto-tune pop shit, but I'm just saying like, it's definitely going to be different. It, it might. It's, I mean, he's still going to be successful either way. Like, I mean, on right. Apple Music, on Apple Music, he was trending last night. Yeah, he was one of, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and this, and you, remind you, a lot of people said, "Oh, I can't rock with Bull because he's going to be. A, he's a snitch. He did this." But these are some some of the same people that said this have no dealings or never had any dealings within that that world. Yeah, they right. just kind of they just saying they ride in the coattails of others saying, "Oh." Yep. Well, I'm not telling. If he's telling, stitches get snitches get stitches. Blah blah blah. Um, and he's just gonna go from there. So, people, well, people are going from there. So, like, it's gonna change. Like, people are people. What people are saying, they're gonna change their mind as soon as you put on that record. He knows how to make music. He knows how he knows how to get people invested in him. People are extremely invested in him. You think when he goes, if he was to go to the Breakfast Club, Angie Martinez, huh? I heard DJ Academic say he thinks he could probably sit down with Gail at this moment, at with Gail King for an interview, and it's possible. He it's probably, possible, yeah. It's not far fetched, yeah. Yeah, you think you think all the people that said whatever they had to say about him, not condoning what his actions, you think they're not going to tune in for that? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, he's it's gonna like, have a good documentary or or a documentary series, whatever. But yeah, there's a lot that can happen with him. So yeah, you're right. You know. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you know, Fifty Cent he bought the uh, rights to that shit, right? No, really? I didn't. Yeah. yeah, like he bought the rights to Six Nine Story. So you get Six Nine out of jail early. You gonna be able to have him, and now you can actually use him to actually help you with writing the story for your for his life. And actually hear his perspective. So, like, plus, let's be honest. The biggest question, the the biggest question amongst everybody is this. What is his music going to sound like? Mm -hmm. And if that's the big, one of the biggest questions, the biggest question now that he's out, outside of if he's going to die or not, like, the big, the second biggest question is, what is his music going to, the biggest question, if he dies or not, is the second biggest question. Like, what's his music going to sound like? That's even by the people that even by the people that said they'll never listen to him again. They're going to listen to it. So if he because if he starts rapping, just happy bop music. If he starts rapping like Chance the Rapper, but it's got a bop to it, what you going to tell your kid? No, don't don't listen to that. Yeah, he's going to be playing well, all in the house again. It's crazy. Sure. Like it's crazy. He's getting out of jail. John Jones is up out there. Well, almost went to jail. You know, he uh, got pulled over. Also. Say it again. Playboy Cardi, yeah, he got arrested, but I think he got out too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Playboy Cardi is it's crazy. How do you think John Jones, uh, how do you think he'll be now that he got away? Uh, well, I don't want to say got away, but he didn't get arrested for what he actually did. I, I feel like with John, so for all three of us are, are John Jones fans. But like, for my opinion of things is, I don't think the man is going to change, man, until something really okay. drastic happens to him. Because this is kind of like the same thing that's going on with him over and over again. You know what I mean? He was like, oh, you know, I feel sorry. And thanks. Thank you for all my fans and supporters who I understand. I have a trouble with alcohol. Well, it's kind of like, well, no shit, John. You've been having trouble with alcohol. Like so you, you don't, you don't like having... to ride around and bust guns in your car? Is that what you're saying? 
I love to do that. You don't, you don't John, like <laughs> but, but John Jones has a he has an image to uphold. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Okay. And, his and his image is uh, you know, he said he was feeding the homeless. Come on, at two yeah. o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, hold on, that's what he said. He said, <laughs> John, and I like John Jones. He's my favorite fighter, man. But like he uh, he said a few things. But yeah, he said he was hanging out with the homeless, just chilling out. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, oh, man. he was trying to get. He was just letting him know, yo, I keep the stride with me. That's why he busted the saddle. Hey, I mean, you never know. Me. Maybe you just don't oh, have fun yes. down there. Well, let me ask a question to you guys. Then. What's so, up? Outside <laughs> of this, uh, a lot of people are thinking that he should be stripped. What do you guys think of that? No, no. I don't. Because nah. because at the end of the day, what he I mean, what he did was careless. But he didn't hurt anybody. Like nobody got hurt. Like at the end of the day, like he got, he didn't go to jail. He didn't have to serve any time. If in the eyes of the law, he didn't do enough to like get put away for a bit of time. It, it's not like what he did caused har- harm to anybody. Like this, John is going to be John. Potentially you know? could have, but it didn't though. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that. That's true. That's the thing. So, at the end of the day. I think just let him keep his belt, but at, this should be the last time that this happens. But, yeah, it should be the last time that it happens, but, like, I don't think he should... One, I don't think he should be stripped of his belt because, like you said, like y'all, like y'all both said, like it's not like he did something to the degree that he could be looking into time. It's not like the last... Now, if, I, I keep it a buck with you. If he was shooting a gun, was driving, drinking, and, and hit a pregnant woman in a car again... Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over. Like, I thought, yeah. It's like, okay, bro. I can't even... Like, as a fan, you let me down, but you're just reckless. Like, you're on yeah. your AB status at yeah. that moment. Yeah. But, like... Yeah, no, that's wild. Yeah, but, like... I think he's going to get... I don't think they're going to let him go. I, well, I don't think they're going to strip him of his belt because if they strip him of his belt, like, it, to me, it's like, okay, what does, what what happens after that? Okay, let's say, let's say they strip him of his belt. He pleads out of the court case in the summertime, right? Okay, so what do you not put John Jones on another card? You put in front of him, you have to give him a title, a, a championship fight. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to yeah. have the belt again. So I, it, I agree with like, you 100%. Yeah, like, only the only uh, only thing that could work for them would be is if they sh- – it really wouldn't work, though. Like, if they stripped him and then said, once you're done with your legal situation, you can come back and fight in the UFC, and they force him to go to heavyweight. But, but shit, if he goes to heavyweight, he wins. Like, <laughs> like okay, yeah. now you just got – you got this yeah. reckless guy – you got this extremely reckless guy that can't be beat. The greatest fighter of all time, arguably. Like, no, I just, think he is, man. Huh? I said I think he is. I agree with you. Yeah, I was. Uh, I actually had a debate with some friends the other day. Well, a discussion rather. And I'm talking about the whole LeBron being athlete of the year, right? So right. initially, we're debating about whether it should be Floyd or LeBron. And these are my two friends that are more into like bot. They're not really into MMA as much, right? So yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I, I was like, honestly, because we were talking about how Floyd had the undefeated record. I was like, honestly, John Jones should be the the athlete of the decade. When you look at he, like I looked at his track record from 2010 to 2019, he was 17 and 0, 17 and 0, <laughs> 17 and 0, 11 of I think. Nine or eleven of his fights are with Hall of Famers. Like, like it, like it. At that moment, it's like, yo, there's nothing that you. It's hard to tell me. Granted, team sports and individual sports are different, but when you're looking at his stats, it's like DC. Uh, he beat Ryan Maynard, I think, prior. Lito Machida, Rampage, Rashad Evans. Like, beat Gustafson twice, and that was actually a difficult fight. Like, though he's not, I wouldn't say he's a Hall of Famer, but like. He's had like every piece of competition, and he was the youngest guy, youngest champion. Like John Jones, not nah, he. I feel like if you look at a picture of champions from 2010, none of those guys are champion anymore. You said, repeat that again. If you look at a list of champions from 2010 to now, 
the only consistent person is John Jones. Yeah. It, yeah, and that's, the only, that's it. The, the only the only person that ever held the te- ever held the light heavyweight title was Daniel, and that's because of John Jones' own self doings to himself. Yeah, and then John Jones when came back came and back, got it. Seen what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They you know, knocked his ass out. And I like Daniel. Yeah. I I do, but yeah, man, John. Like what you were saying, Spence, I, I kind of second it, you know, because it's like he he fought more consistently than Floyd, and right. and the opponents he fought have a better what you could say like a strength of schedule compared to Floyd. Right. Now the the thing about the athlete of the we kind of we talked about this a little while ago actually the yeah. it's it's kind of subjective, man, because the thing about it is like they're always people are always gonna kind of come up with their own like points on what what makes an athlete better and what why they should win this versus that like i remember when tom brady won his six rings there was already a debate like oh is tom brady a better athlete than michael jordan i thought it was crazy because i was like no nah, like basketball you know there's a real difference uh, on each individual athlete versus football despite right. them being uh team sports but as you see, if you remove Michael Jordan from the Chicago Bulls, you see that they didn't go to the finals with him. You know what I mean? Uh, they were a second round, uh, they were a second round playoff team. And yeah, with they made it to the conference finals, I think. Uh, they didn't. They, hold on, I thought no, they made it to the conference finals that year. I think without without uh, Jordan, right? Because Scott, because Scotty, because Scotty, yeah. I, I I could look it up, but I think Scotty led them to like the. Conference finals without Jordan, like they pretty even without Jordan, they were. But Jordan built that team at the end of the day. Yeah, that team was around. That team was built for him in a sense, you know. No disrespect to Scottie Pippen, Steve Kerr, and the rest of the you know team that was on there. But like it was Jordan's team without a shadow of doubt. But like with the athlete of the year thing or the decade, I mean, is is kind of subjective. You know what I mean? Like John Jones can win that. LeBron can win that, and Floyd can win that, you know. But if we're right. if we're just debating between the three, you know, I would rather put LeBron and John over Floyd because like Floyd's argument was like, oh well, he made the most money, he did it all by himself, and and you know, and he fought the best of the best that boxing had or whatever like that. But you know, Floyd didn't really fight a whole lot in the ten years time span either, you know. Yeah, I I think yeah. he had. That's the only, to me. I agree with that. Like that, when it comes to Floyd, that's the only part where I take away. Like, okay, you only fought five times. I think he fought five or six times in that whole that whole time span. Yeah. The the other thing I will give the reason why I, for me I I still put I would say is John Floyd and then LeBron only because okay. with Floyd he was carrying the sport. Like he kind of yeah. carried the sport throughout the tens. The 2010s. So even despite him having less amount of fights, it's because of him. Like he was, Floyd was putting in. Like I don't want to get too far away from the conversation about John, but right. uh, just on John's situation. But like just in the sense of Floyd, though, he was carrying the fight. He carried the he carried the sport for that whole decade, and even in his big fights, his undercard fights were pretty much the fighters that we are. Where we know Javante Davis, Adrian Broner. Though he's a bust now, he was like the biggest guy at one moment in time. We and he yep. introduced uh, introduced us to Canelo. Uh, yep. He fought Manny. Even despite people saying Manny was old, Floyd's older than Manny. Manny's right, still yep. like one of the top guys today. So like and that's my reason why I put Floyd. It's to me, it's John Floyd and then LeBron because at the end of the day, when it comes to that conversation, to me and my stamp, my judging standpoint is we're talking about winning at the highest level. At the yep. highest of highest levels, and for I, me, LeBron, LeBron is three for seven. So, yeah, he, three, yeah, man, LeBron, he lost too much in the final. I mean, what he's done is very hard to eight straight finals. You know, what I mean, that's a Facts. I don't. It's it's hard to do that, but at the same time, you know, like you said, it's about winning at the highest level. And John and Floyd, to their respect, they won at the highest level in their sports consistently. Exactly. So. Exactly. Exactly, like, but even like then though, like 
like going back to like John, like with this whole thing with him, like just being able to be a fighter that that should be put in those type of conversations. Like it as a fan, it's so upsetting to see him doing like stupid shit like this. Because it's like, yeah, bro, it's like, irritating. Yeah, because it's like, like if if the UFC were because I seen, I think it was Chell. I didn't even click the video because I was like, it's not worth my time watching. But Chell, it was a title about like, should the UFC get rid of John? Because in a sense, he is a he's he's a huge commodity to to UFC, but he's also just like he can pull, he can really mess up a good card because you saw yes. when, when we had the DC fights, um, well, mainly the DC fights, and then just okay, being a championship level fighter, like he really kind of like all his answers kind of robbed us of seeing him fighting against heavyweight fighters just because of those delays kind of now set up things for Dominic Reyes. Like had John, this been John two or three or four years, about four years ago, it would have been like, oh shit. Okay. He's, there's nobody else in his weight class. Let's just move him up to heavyweight. He probably would have dominated there for a little bit. He would have had a harder time, but he probably would have figured out a way to win at the end of the day. So, but so to me as a fan, it's like he, his antics, I feel like, are ro- just robbed us out of a lot of great moments outside of robbing himself out of good money. So, yeah, it's curious. I mean, the UFC, man, they're having a they're having a field day with John, man, and I, I know it's it's just a shame because this morning I seen that they were going <clears> to <throat> there were in early talks with Dominic Reyes for the rematch, and yep. with this happening, of course, this really? is just going to push shit back. Yeah. yeah. So it it's, it's crazy because now uh, you have Jan Blockowitz and uh, Diego Santos talking about an interim title. But, you know, I don't think the interim title fight is going to happen. And if anything, the UFC, they might try to put a title eliminator together, which is not fair to the guys. But, you know, this is what happens with John. And you know what I mean? And another thing that the UFC is dealing with right now, which I know you guys can't wait to really discuss, is the Tony Habib thing. Oh yes. man! Oh Bro. yeah, I'm ready to get into that. Yeah, let's just start. This fight is not meant to happen. It's uh, it's one of those fights that what? This is the sixth time they've tried to make it now. Fifth, Fifth sixth time. Fifth. Yeah. Well, it, Fifth time. When it finally was actually about to happen, the world stopped it and said, "No, coronavirus." <laughs> like that that's what happened this fight isn't we're not meant to see it we're just not meant to see it really yeah like it's yo you're absolutely right i was thinking about i think because I, I think you sent a text message about that saying like yo maybe if they just cancel the fight the world will go back to normal like at this yeah. point the, at this point it feels like it because even after everything was said and done like well actually before we kind of get into that Let's let the listeners kind of get an idea of like what happened as okay. to like this whole timeline of like this whole fight, this fight thing since the virus has started. Yeah. Oh, you want to explain it? Well, you mean like the history of their fights being canceled, or just like do like, like the pandemic, like the since the pandemic. So Tony and Habib were originally scheduled to fight on the 18th, but once the pandemic happened. The UFC, they've canceled all their events, except for the one that's supposed to be happening on April 18th, because that's not officially canceled yet, even though we all know it's probably going to be canceled. Um, It was supposed to happen in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. Then that got scrapped because New York was like, no. So Dana was going to move it to Las Vegas. That got scrapped because Nevada was like, no. So Dana was talking about moving it overseas. Well, he didn't officially say that, but Ariel Hawani and other reporters, you know, came out and said it was going to happen overseas. But first, Russia was going to be looked at. Russia came out and said no. And then next day, they were talking about doing an Abu Dhabi. <laughs> <laughs> and then Abu Dhabi finally turned out and said no. <laughs> so H- Habib, he, he actually was going to fly to Abu Dhabi, but apparently when Abu Dhabi, their government, whatever, put up, their restrictions due to the pandemic, Habib flew home to Russia. And then right. Russia has a lockdown. So Habib, he can't really like leave outside of Russia. So he was 
in so many words, he was basically saying, hey, I have to buy out of this fight. And um, and with that, it just caused all the craziness. You know, Tony coming out. Of course, Connor came out. The other fighters were saying, you know, they were stepping to fight Tony. But Tony is only interested in Habib and Connor. And that's what he told Ariel. If it's not those two, you know, why is he going to continue to have basically fights that does nothing for him? And I agree with Tony 100%. He yep. deserves Habib or Connor. This, yeah. If he's not, if he's going to risk losing that title shot, then he might as well get paid a hell of a lot of money to do it. And that's yeah, and essentially what would happen if he fights him. Yeah. And and even it's, it's the money part, but also at the end of the day, I feel like despite despite how I think now Connor's, I, well, I can't even say Connor's exposed because after his performance with Cerrone, we don't really know what's going to happen. Like, we, we saw a couple of things. Though it was a short fight, we saw a couple of things from Connor that we've never seen. So we right, don't know okay. the, the caliber of fighter he may be now within within at one fifty five, but okay. even then, like if you gave Tony Justin Gaethje, more than likely the top three fighters of that division, all when it's all said and done, is probably going to be Tony, Khabib, and Connor at the end yeah. of the debut. So, 100%. so you giving him Justin Gaethje, even outside of just the payday aspect of it, it's like yo, don't have me fight the number four, or number five guy when. You were going to have number four and number three fight each other. If you were going to have Gaethje and and Connor fight each other, why are you giving me Gaethje when when we know Connor's ranked higher or he's he's essentially the the biggest draw. He's one of the biggest draws and one of the the fighter that anybody would be willing to see. So yeah. it makes no sense. Plus, I think it, it would be smarter for Dana to do that because it 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 can make things messy. If Connor was to lose, because it's it becomes like okay, now we have to figure. Now Connor drops even more. On I mean, it doesn't make it messy if he if he loses though, because like at the end of the day, if Connor loses to let's say if he were to fight, uh, you mean if Connor fights Gaethje, right? Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying if Connor was to fight Tony, right, and he loses to okay. Tony. Yeah. yeah. Now, now is pretty much now Tony has an interim belt. He can fight against Khabib. Now, okay, now we have Connor. Are we going to put Connor against Gaethje, or should Gaethje be the next person to have be the next contender if he's the if he's the fourth person in the in the rankings? Well, I think if that was the case and, and Connor lost to Tony, then you can still put Connor against everybody. You're telling me like he lost essentially to the person who's supposed to be fighting for the title, like that 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 doesn't really hurt Connor that much. Now, say if he loses to Gaethje. Or, or anybody else other than Khabib or Tony, then I, I think it does hurt his uh, stock quite a bit. But because Tony is under Khabib, Tony is that that guy right now. If he loses to him, it's all right because he's he's highly ranked. Do you guys think that Khabib should be stripped uh, of this? Because some people nah. are calling for that too. Why nah, nah, I don't. It it would make no sense for him to be stripped because, at the end of the day, like I know, a lo- I think most fans saying that are were the same ones that were questioning Khabib, like, yo, if you couldn't go to uh, Abu Dhabi, if Abu Dhabi said no, why didn't you just come back to the states? Yeah, and that some because I think even Tony is trying to make it seem like Khabib is running from the fight now at this point by going back to Russia, and he can't leave. So the issue I think becomes like. You can't strip the man because there's a global crisis. If nobody in the world right. wants to host the fight, that's not his fault that he says any common person, anybody with common sense says, oh, there's a, a global crisis and I can't get the fight right now. I'm going back home to train one where he he's from a city that has probably the best wrestlers in the world for the past 10, or tw- 10, 10 to 15 years, possibly at an Olympic level. So he's going to be able to train with them and be with his family. So you can't penalize that man. For, I don't think it'd be nah. smart to penalize him for that. Like, I, I agree with you. I don't think he should be stripped. It's 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 clearly not his fault. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Like it's like, there's a pandemic going on. You know? Yeah, but like even then, like so, like as like from a fan's perspective, though, like 
do you think we'll ever get to see this fight between him and him and Tony? Because more than likely, because he's even right now, he said he's still training for this fight. Because he in an interview, I, I, it wasn't with Ariel; it was with someone on ESPN. He said, "I'm I'm the champion. I'm a practice. I always." I'm the champion. I always have to be ready. So he's still practicing as if the fight were to happen. So like, even if let's say it's scrapped and it can't happen right now, five times, one time it's like diet issues. Khabib, had, I think Khabib had a couple issues dieting, uh, going to the hospital. Tony had some issues, tripped over a extension cord and blew yeah, his ACL. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like. When we finally get the fight, now we get the we finally get the fans. We finally get the fight at a ch- at the highest level that fight can be put at a championship yeah. level. Like yeah. we don't get the fight. Is, do you think we're ever going to get this fight? And if so, do you think it's when do you think do you think it's going to be a fight that we'll get in the near future, or do you think it's going to be like that grudge match that we never got, and it's going to be like a, a Floyd and Manny in a sense where we got it too late? So I um. <clears throat> I, I have hope that the fight will happen, but if it if it's going to happen, the earliest it can happen now, we're talking about winter 2020. Because remember, Habib, he does Ramadan, and yeah. he said that it takes him about a month or some change for him to recover from Ramadan before he can properly fight anybody. So yeah. Ramadan, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I, I know it does start this month. But I think it ends like towards the end of May or something like that, right? So oh, I'm not sure. I know because I know you said something about August. August right. possibly being being a time that he would be. Well, yeah, it's probably around the same time. Go ahead. I I I, I mean it. He could come to fight back in August, but I'm thinking like all the other canceled stuff that the UFC got going on. Unless they do a super card, kind of like what we were talking about. Uh, a while ago, if they're not going to do a super card, putting all the big fights on one card, they're probably going to stretch everything out, which could put stretch the Habib and Tony fight to like November or December. And plus, mm. I, you know, you can't forget about the face of mixed martial arts, Connor. You know, they, I know Dana White, he'd rather put on a Connor fight first before Habib and Tony. That's his priority if you really think about it. I, yeah, yeah. From a from a after like this whole crisis thing, the Connor fight is going to probably have to be the the next thing for for the UFC just because of like you said, unless it's a super card, yeah, you know, like you you probably will need you probably will need uh, Connor as your biggest as your biggest card because this uh, this virus a bat, a virus is pretty much stopping every business. So the UFC isn't really make the UFC is probably making money still, but probably what maybe 15 or 20 percent of what it's typically making so that connor fight would probably be a huge payday and if that could be that would be that would be dope if the first fight the first big fight in the ufc is a connor fight after this pandemic is over with that would be great you know how if and if they can make that be the fight like the first sporting event major sporting event (laughs) after this shit is over with that would be crazy yeah it would be what are your thoughts, Nigel, about that? I mean, me personally, I think it might be good to have a super card, if nothing else, just to have like, uh, you can have Connor. I think because Connor fights when he wants to fight, if he's not, you know, ready to go pretty much whenever, I think they'll just book who they can, and that'll be different champions and whatnot. And Connor, they'll put on more or less when he wants to go. That could be first or that could be second. But, like, I think at the same point in time, Connor would like to fight for the title. Maybe they just try and keep uh, Tony, Tony and Khabib on the forefront so that way they have something for Connor next. Because, honestly, I don't think he's many, willing to fight many other people than the champion because he wants the belt back at the end of the day. Before we move on, so ne- next month, the big pay-per-view was supposed to be uh, Cejudo and Aldo. But there's rumors saying that Aldo might not make it due to Brazil going through what they're going through with the pandemic. Right. And then uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the fighter Cody Sanhagen. He's like number three or four yeah. in the bantamweight ranking. 
He's talking about moving in to fight Cejudo. Do you think that they're going to be like, uh, well, since Cejudo is not a big star or a big name fighter like Tony and Habib, so let's just cancel the event outright? Or like, or are they going to be like, hey, we're going to keep the event, and if Aldo can't come, we're going to try to find a replacement? Mm. It might be better to at this. It's I don't know. That's it's weird. That's a that's a hard question because if they don't can't if they cancel the fight if they don't cancel the fight and they just replace Aldo, it could be it still could be a big thing just because there's there's really no sports going on right now and more yeah. real life we probably we probably won't have any live sport like high level live sports for uh, probably probably till the summertime possibly because I know basketball's NBA is still trying to figure some shit out. But yeah. But like I mean at the same time though for just in terms of like that weight class thing it may be it may be best for for them to push that fight back just so you're able to have Henry Cejudo versus Jose Jose Aldo down the line. I don't know. Like, I, I feel. You take well, guys, you take. I was gonna say you just take risk when you try to replace a fighter because you could get an upset. Let's say if Henry Cejudo gets, let's say they put someone in for Aldo and they just starch, like they just yeah. make Henry Cejudo look like he has no business being in the, the octagon. Like that's now we don't even have now that fight between Cejudo and Aldo probably won't even be a something worth watching or it'll limit your interest to it. So it's like you take those big, those type of fights you take, well, those type of moments, those decisions, you take big risk at the end of the day. Like, yo, if I don't do this shit, we might be good. If I do do this shit, this shit could go left and we could be no good. Like, it'd be like saying if they put Justin Gaethje in there to fight uh, uh, Tony, right? This is something different, but he had, like, they said, okay, we're just going to give Gaethje to Tony right now. And let's say Gaethje makes Tony look like he has no business being in the room. He yeah. looks like he just walks right through Tony. Now the, convers- the conversation with Tony becomes less like, oh, well, we don't care to see him fight Khabib anymore because he's not even a worthy opponent in comparison to what Gaethje may be. So like, you take well, a lot of you take those type of risks, I think. I, well, I think um, with Henry Cejudo, in that case, I might be willing to put on the fight still, even though um, even though it might not be against Jose Auto, because I think if you put that fight on, uh, Henry is the A side, so I think he he will be the person to sell that fight. Like as far as uh, the UFC goes, I say you, you might as well keep on going. Now, you know, Henry decides that uh, where the risk comes in that you were talking about, like if Cody goes in there and makes him look like just some bum. Then it would it would be he he has to be willing to take the chance with that, which I, I can only imagine he thinks he'll beat him. But as far as the UFC goes, I think for that specific fight, they should have it go on. But Tony and Khabib, I think the reason that fight sells is because they the best is supposed to be going against the best. Unlike right. that fight, which I feel is a little different. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with you, Nigel, on that. And um. Spence, you, you mentioned something about like demand and like no live sports. So right. um, one thing I want to say is like streaming is becoming like very, very prevalent right now. And uh, so two things for you. And now I want to and this is for both of you guys to answer. But uh, one, do you think esports are going to really thrive from this? And two, people from like Instagram doing like streaming battles and stuff like that. Or, or even just streaming music live, or whatever. Do you think like we're going to see that like really flourish in this upcoming month or so? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, because I've thought about some of this stuff before. Like, I think that this whole pandemic thing and sitting people in the house, I think it's going to just change the way we live overall, the way we consume things, the way we work, because jobs are even. And I don't want to. I don't want to veer too far off from like esports and like battlings and stuff like that, but even in the sense of like jobs, jobs are going to probably say now, hey, we we don't have to. Why do we need to have these offices as much when hell in the twenties? Though in the history, they'll look back and say in the twenties, the whole world shut down and everybody was able to be more effective from the comforts of their home. 
So when it comes to even these aspects of like battles and seeing like like esports and stuff like that, like everything becomes a, a bigger thing. Like you see right now, like the NBA, right? I think the NBA players are doing something like they want to do a, a championship, uh, a championship two K, two K, and I at the end, like just when it's all said and done, like I think anybody, I'm I'm not even a two K person like that, but that's something I would want to watch because we're, you're actually seeing someone that plays at the highest level play their sport through a virtual game, and you right. you, you get to see okay, we're going to be able to see what they would do. As this, at, at they, what their mind, what their mental is when it comes to like kind of choreographing a whole team essentially. Yeah. Um, but e- and then even with music, it's like, look at hell, look at um, Corey Lanes, he has the highest, um, highest, highest views amongst people, or a high like the most amount of people coming to a live stream in right. Instagram history right now with yeah, over like 300,000 people. I think he had, I think radio. Like, Yep, quarantine radio. Like, I, like you see something like seeing that. Like, if Tory Lane said, "You know what? I'm putting music as a secondary thing for the rest of his career." Quarantine radio will probably he could probably go off into quarantine radio and do that as his thing from now on. He would yeah. just have to figure out how to monetize from it. Yep. So, so like, I think I mean I think it's something I think it's something that you that's going to happen. Like, even hell, even like, and we'll probably get more into it. But like the battles that we've seen so far. I'm literally just said, oh, I'm not doing anything right now. Let me just sit back and watch the battles right now. Like, I can watch my favorite producers of all time or some of the, the people I deem to be some of the greatest producers, and I can actually sit and watch them go neck to neck. Instead of like the fan, you know how we as fans, we always debate the shit anyway. Who do you think is the better producer? You think like right. tonight is Little John versus T-Pain or... Hell, Scott Storrs versus Manny Fresh. So you could say, well, who do you think is the better producer? Uh, there's some people that, there are some celebrities that said Manny Fresh was the greatest <laughs> producer. He's one of the great ones. Nobody wants any smoke with him. I don't know if you saw it, but when he went up against Scott Storch, it was he got, like... He got scorched. Was, I, I've seen the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, that shit was like, that shit was crazy, but you... It allows fans to be able to connect with the viewers at the end of the day. Like the fans connect with the celebrities, and it kind of creates it. It creates something bigger for the brand. I think some people it's not going to work. Like I don't know if you saw Jeezy or not. Did you see the video with Jeezy? Because he has a song called I saw Something. It. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. It's uh, it's interesting. For Jeezy, it's a uh, it's a different type of uh, video for sure. Well, yeah. kind of explain it because I I didn't see it. What you guys are talking about? It's um he's dancing. He's kind of dancing and like, but like kind of like the pop lock type shit like this. And yeah, having yeah. like the like the animation, like the light animations going through while he's doing it because he's trying. I guess trying to have like a dance for a TikTok. Young Jeezy. Okay. Yes. Young Jeezy. Yeah. It's uh. Kid, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's out there oh. dancing, man. Like it's, it's in the crazy. Of the grocery store. Yeah, like it's you'll, it's a different never, type of video, man. You'll never see Gucci do that, dog. You'll never see nah. big Gucci do that. Wow. <laughs> I fuck with Jeezy though, man. Like but that shit, that shit's crazy, man. I saw that earlier today. I was like, nah. If not, it's. Did you guys listen to his uh, EP that came out? Uh, Twenty Pyrex Vision. I want to. I was, I'm not even going to hold you, I was, and then I saw that video on Twitter, and I said, nah, I was like, I was like, whatever you selling, bro, I'm not even trying to buy now, like, 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 it's kind of, it's kind of crazy, like, but, oh, before we, like, jump too far off, like, Nigel, what's your thoughts on the question that Lyle asked, though? What do you mean? Like, in terms of, like, do you think like when you see like esports and then seeing like the live streams and everything on social media now, do you like do you think that's gonna be a you because you were saying like do you think it's gonna be like an impact a, a major impact moving forward? Right. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I I don't think esport I think I think it's gonna be 50-50. I feel like at at some point some people will really gravitate towards watching these um you know, online sports and whatever. 
and that will work. But at the same point in time, I think some people will really realize that they like being outside. And also businesses will have to also go back to operating like people are outside. Like when I think about all the things that are happening right now, they're all cool and we can all watch them since we have nothing else to do. But when we do have something to do other than sitting inside watching these things, they won't be as prevalent. And that's just the way it is. Now, do I think that they will be, I think they will cater to a certain audience who wants to watch it, but just not for, I don't think that is a business. I don't think that is a way that could last just the way it is now. It would have to change. Something about it would have to change. I mean, it. I, I, I think I can see that. Like, I mean, I think something will, I think something will have, about it will have to change. Like, I'll take, for instance, like battle rappers, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You might not, I don't know if you heard of him, but New Jersey Twerk, right? He's yep. like one of the, I, I, I don't know if I would say he's, he's at a top tier level, but he's one of the new, newer guys, essentially. He's bad. Him, Hollow to Don, who's a top tier, argue, to me, I argue that he's one of the top four battle rappers of all time. Like, they're battling people. They're battling, like, you, you could pay New Jersey Twerk $100. And he'll battle you for one, two, one, one minute round. So like, imagine being able to go against like your favorite, like like you said that one time about Pat State, right? Like, imagine if you said, "Yo, I think I got bars. I could beat Pat State." And you just Pat State says, "You got to pay me a hundred dollars, and I'll battle you for I'll battle you for a hundred dollars." You so, mean like on Instagram Live? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That that would be entertaining too. Actually. Yeah, and, and yeah. they're doing that. They're doing that now. Even right now, um, like just in just, and I'm referring to, to this like what Nigel was saying, like for business wise, like how how does it make sense for the business side of things? Like, I think a lot of people are going to realize that they have to be more independent in terms of how to generate some type of income outside of the quote unquote the machine. So you see someone yeah. like like twerk or I think it was DNA versus. Uh, John John the Don, like they were battling each other. And these are high level names, top two right. guys. I think um, DNA was on BET and he won like the the champion of the year. He's like a pioneer within battle rap. Like they're battling each other, but you only can access the you to get into the Instagram page. You had to pay ten dollars, so you had to pay ten dollars just so you could watch the battle between oh, the wow. two. Yeah, so, and they're just battling through live. So it's like, it's one of those things where I think the dynamic is going to change. But like Nigel said, it's just all about what sense does, how does it make sense for the business side of things when people are able right. to go back outside? Like, like outside. When, when are people, when are people actually inside? Do we do these things during the week? Do we do it on like a Thursday night? Because I mean, like in reality, you can make some of the stuff primetime TV or primetime whatever. If you do it right, but right. it just won't be like Tory Lanez isn't going to be on live every night because, well, one, he'll he might do a show. So there's no way he could. There's, I, I doubt that he'll want to do these things that, are, that he's doing right now. Like things will just change. Yeah. I mean, but you, well, I was I was just going to say, like, with that whole thing with Tory Lanez, I wouldn't be surprised if Quarantine Radio, he's able to take. I mean, because quarantine radio at this point is a huge success, primarily through like chicks shaking their ass and shit. But I think he could say, okay, like you said, like he has shows and everything like that. But if he says, all right, so on this time every night or this time Eastern time, whatever, let's say nine o'clock Eastern time, eight o'clock Eastern time, every night or once a week throughout the duration of the year, I will have quarantine radio. So that means the girl, those girls still have a chance to get on live because, I mean, a lot of dude, a lot of people with relationships are mess- getting messed up because of this shit, but like, you'll still be able, people are be still be willing to go into, still go on quarantine, quarantine, what, was, what is it? Quarantine radio. Like, people still want to go on quarantine radio. It's just I think the way he'll have to monetize it is he'll, he may end up monetizing it through um, I think it was like caffeine or caffeine is like they're like they're like the live stream thing that they do with like uh, 
PS like PlayStation and URL and shit like that. Or he may just turn quarantine radio into something and sell it to Apple Music. And now yeah. he has cool. Now he's getting paid for quarantine radio at least once a week. The same way uh Drake had like the OVO sound radio. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that still going on? OVO sound radio and the Travis Scott one and all that? Um, I, I couldn't even tell you. I, I think I think it has I think they still have their moments, just not as much anymore. Yeah, that that was a thing in like 2016, man. OVO Sound Radio. That, I, I mean, for us Apple Music guys, you know, because I know Nigel didn't, doesn't get to experience. Nope. <laughs> he doesn't get to experience Wave yeah, no, Radio. <laughs> the struggles that they had to face, man. Like, you guys have y'all, have y'all uh, listened to any of the new music that's been coming out recently? Yeah. Yeah. Well, have y'all heard not, Lulu? Not, yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad that you brought that up because that was that was one thing I, I wanted to talk about was uh, right. Lulu. I I think man, Lulu is a great e- EP, and I think Lulu it's good man. And and I think honestly, man, I really think like the Griselda, and and I'm just talking about Griselda. I'm not talking about like the the other labels under them, like BSFs and all the other shit. Um, right. But just Benny Conway and Westside Gun, man. I feel like they're they're really gonna they're gonna kind of uh, put a change to the, the game, you know. And because uh, I like, go ahead. go ahead. I the the Pray for Paris cover. I feel like that's it's already catching buzz that's alone just so off sick. the cover, just off the cover alone. And I feel like West Side Gun, Conway, and, and Benny, man, they're, they're, it's like a breath of fresh air right now. And mm. Lulu was just, Lulu was fantastic, man. The, the production by Alchemist was, it, it was just good, man. It was just Yeah, he awesome. did his thing, I like, man. I like, if you guys didn't notice, like, the titles of each of the songs were, like, references to the movies, except They Got Sunny. I think They Got Sunny, I think that was off of Godfather. Because, uh... No, that's, uh, that's paid in full. Yeah. That's why Peyton yeah. Poole was uh, in the skits as well. Yeah. No, no, right. Yeah, I know with Lulu and all that, but I thought they got Sunny because I remember BBS is when, um, what what was it, when Mitch pulled up to the hood with gold BBS rims or something like that? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, I thought they got Sunny because if you guys seen the first Godfather movie, El, um, so El Pacino's character, he had a brother named Sonny who was basically next in line to be the Don. When the original Don, well, he was out temporarily, and then Sonny, right. he got set up and he got killed. And then what happened after that scene of him getting killed? They were like, "Oh, they got Sonny. He's dead. He's dead." So that's why I thought that was. From- no, nah, I mean, it, I, it was from it was from paid in full. It was paid. It was from paid in full. Well, I was going. You want to say it or? Yeah, I'll well, say I, it. I was going. to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, like, all right. No, nah, it was from it was <laughs> yeah. it was from Peyton Pool when uh, Makai Pfeiffer. I can't remember his character's name in the uh, movie right now, but he was like, "They got Sunny, man." Yeah, yeah. He's he's they got Sunny, man. What you mean? They got Sunny B. They yeah. did. Anybody oh. that owes me money on the streets, they did. I just yeah, want my yeah. little man back. That part. I, yeah, I, remember, so. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes me want to watch that movie, man. That's a really good movie. It is. I it's might watch. It is. I it's one of my favorites, honestly. I think it's it's one of my it has to be up there. It's probably like top three. There's a couple if you watch the movie close enough, like you know when they kill Calvin, right? Yeah. Okay. Um when Rico kills Calvin, you know how you only can see it for a split second. My man's show uh put me onto it. But when they kill Calvin, you know how the whole inside of the car is covered in blood, right? Even the windshield. Yeah. yeah. Well, Watch that! Watch that scene because when Rico pulls off, the can the car is completely clean. Like it's one of those like, <laughs> like then I was like, watch when you watch. It's like those little, there's like little things in the whole video in that movie that you could tell. It's like, oh, this is like a low budget. This is a high quality low budget movie. Like, like yeah. it's it's probably hands down one of the best movies of all time. But like, so you're, you're saying that it's on the same scale of uh, original Gangsters. <laughs> you don't, like you don't like original gangster stuff? Nah, man, I ain't never watched that shit. Honestly, it I has a uh, soundtrack. 
You remember uh, Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show? Yeah. He's the main villain in that movie. And uh, it's you just got to watch it, man. It's crazy. <laughs> he's the he's, a he, villain. he's he's like the kingpin drug dealer yeah. dude in the movie. That's him. And yeah, the okay. people are getting shot in crazy ways. Like it's it's yeah. wild, man. You got to watch that movie. And it's it's, it's a gangster. it's called Original Gangsters. They used to call on BET like every Friday. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, it, you yeah, got to watch the movie, man. They treat that movie like baby boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you serious? I'm dead to it. Yo, you remember like uh Valentine Hart or whatever? Or that movie of Ving Rains where he was cross dressing? Yeah. They they showed it just as many times as I showed that movie. How did I miss this? That I don't know, weird. man. Me and my sister used to watch that shit. It was so funny. Oh, it, it's a funny movie. Yeah. It, it's not, not meant bad. to be funny, but it's funny. It's just oh, wild. Those are the like, best ones. So, oh yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this: Is it in comparison to like Killer Season? <laughs> I think the, the production, the the production, it, you could tell there's there was more money involved than that versus Killer Season. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Killer Season was such, Killer Season is such a classic movie, but it's so trash. Yo, you remember the scene where dude was like, um, he was like. Shorty was like, I go to school now. She was like, he was like, yo, I'm home though. I'm home now. All that shit go out the window. But I, I go to school. I'm trying to be a nurse. Nah, I go, I, I'm home now. Like, he started, I think he ended up beating that girl up or some shit. It was like a wild yeah. movie. Was that <laughs> when he was like, oh, you got dreams now or something like that? Some shit like yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, he was like, yo, he was like, what you gonna be? He was like, yo, no, Cameron's math in that movie is horrible. He was like, what you oh, want to get a job? Time. You want to get a job making $50,000 a year? So after taxes, what's that, 30000 <laughs> 30000 30, He's like, so now you got to pay rent. That's what, twelve, fifteen thousand. 15000 Like, he broke it all the way down to like $4,000. He said, you got to get fresh. Come on, man. <laughs> like, How you going to eat? <laughs> He's like, you got to eat. You got to get fresh. You can't do that, man. He's like, this is a Hyundai, this is a Carrera. He's like, hey, I want the Carrari, man. Like, this Carrera, you dumbass. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that movie's so bad but great because it really depicts parts of life. Because I've seen people really tell someone, like, what you really think you're going to go to the league? You got dreams and shit? Like, <laughs> this is sick. So sick. I, I told you that time I had a uh, I had a manager that I was like, yo, can you change my schedule? Because... I like, like the sum, the summer's over and I'm about to start going to school. And while I'm going back to school, he was like, you going to college? I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, man, like, just work instead. I'm like, bro, but I can go to college and do something else. He was like, my cousin works for, he was like, my cousin went to college and he sleeps on my couch. I was like, all right, cool. I was like, well, I'm going to still go to school. So yeah. fast forward, that same cousin of his that slept on his couch that he kept saying, he went to like MI, he went to like a high honors college. He was like, well, well he, he works for NASA quick, now. Quick question. How do you feel about how do you feel about it when people say, well, college isn't for everybody? Is that a is that a statement that you believe in? Uh, yeah, I I yeah. believe in that. Uh, college isn't why? for everybody. I because the reason why it's not for everybody, because everybody's capable of going to college. It's not for everybody because not everybody has the mental aptitude to go to college. Some people just, they just don't want to go to school. And it's not wrong with that. That's why I believe college is not for everybody. Now, I'm going to give an example. Like, for example, my my two little brothers. Well, one of them. So one of my little brothers, he could clearly go to college. He's extremely smart. This man, he'd been across the world like I have. And he just does not want to do it. He doesn't care to do it. He has no interest of doing it. And I feel like people like that, college is not for them. You know? Because I, I feel like college is something that you have to want to do. You know what I mean? I feel like all three of us can be we could really flourish in a rap game if we really wanted to, but the rap game is not for us because we're not putting our, our heart and soul into it. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that it's not something that we could do as a 
on the side or do as a side venture, but it's not our bread and butter. Because if it w- if it was, we would put our mind to make sure that it's our bread and butter. It's that's why I believe college is not for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I see it. I see it like this. I think my point, my opinion on why I don't think college is for everybody is well, one. I hate always straddling the fence, but I think one, I think a lot of people have different learning styles Mm -hmm. and, and you have to find the right school or the right professor or the right teaching system for that learning style. And you have a lot of people, to be honest with you, like, I know people that like, I like the stuff I go to school for, right? Like a lot of the stuff I know, I knew before I went to college. But I knew because I knew a lot of stuff. I know a lot of stuff that I know because I taught it to myself. Versus when you go to school, I think a lot of people. Some I think a lot of people. Some people I think that go to school don't know what they want to do. Yeah, and they're just kind of pushed into the system of you got to go to college, which is nothing wrong with that. But I think there's other people that say, "Hey, I know what I want to do, and what I want to do doesn't need a degree for. Like you can't. Don't tell me you want to be a doctor." but you don't want to go to school. That makes no sense. But yeah, or it's like, uh, I, I, you've heard people say, oh, like, I want to be this, that, or the third, but I don't want to read all those books. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Nah, I've heard that. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's real, though. I've heard that before. Like, it's like, oh, nah, you know, I just don't want to, I don't want to, pretty much they don't want to apply themselves to get the end result. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. Like, 50 Cent talked about this before. And that's one of, the, like, I always tell people, when the goal I, one of the goals I have is like to make enough money that my child has an option. Like, hey, I'm gonna teach you the game and what you do with it is what you do with it. Now if you wanna go and go to school, this money can fund you going to school. If you wanna use the money to start a business or start a venture in something you wanna do, you can do that as well. Cause it all like one thing I'm like it all translates no matter what. Like business acumen is business acumen. If you know how to shake and bake in a room, you know how to shake and bake in a room. Right. And a lot of times, the thing, a lot of things that you learn in college isn't always, it doesn't always translate to the, to the real world. Like, like, so to me, it's just like, okay, you can, you don't have, people don't, everybody doesn't have to go to college if you know what you want to be. Definitely, you know what you want to be. And, you know, to get to your goal, you don't need school. Is more power to you, but you just got to make sure you're willing to work your ass off to get to that point. Right. Because college college helps. I think mean, I will say this. College helps because it's its own ecosystem. Like, like I always tell people, I've met people, I've met people in creative resources that I would never have had I never went to college and found opportunities that I would probably, that I'm not going to say I never would have found them, but it would have been very unlikely for me to find them. Had I not gone to college, so well, but, well I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, pretty much like the way I see it is like it's not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily the most important not the most important that you go to college, but it is that it is important that you have a goal and you need to be working towards that goal, and it can't be some like oh I want to be chilling at the, as a manager at McDonald's, like that can't be your goal. Like you have to have, you have to aspire. Say it again. I was going to say, you'd be surprised. I've, I've met people, trust me, bro. I've met people that they've said like, oh, you know, I can get a job working at, let's say, let's say, we'll just say for instance, the post office, right? Well, hold on, hold on, wait real quick before you say that. My bad. I was going to say, um, go ahead. You should have a goal to be something greater. You know what I mean? At the end right. of the day. Now, how you how you get there is how you get there. It doesn't have to be college, the military in particular, but you shouldn't aspire to be some bum. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you should, <laughs> I, I mean, that's just it. Like, have your aspirations high, and however you get there is how you choose it. But like you said, Spence, like, you should have the option on how you do it, or you would like to provide the option. Exactly. No. I think... I- Right. My bad. Go ahead, Smith. You already talked. Well, my bad. Oh no, you straight. Um, no, nah, it's just my thing is like, yeah, like you have to have the aspirations, and in a dream world, I think it it would be beautiful for all of us to be able to 
turn 18 and our parents be able to give us the option of, hey, you can do this or you can do that. And this is this is the I'm going to give you the highest level of support that I can give you that a lot of people aren't are unable to give. And for some people, it's hard for a lot of people. That's hard to have that ability to be provided that. But I think. Yeah, like you said, it comes down to aspirations at the end of the day. Like you look at someone like Nipsey Hussle, for instance, right? Like a brilliant guy, extremely smart, was able to figure out what he knew what he wanted to do at a at a younger age, no matter despite whatever was going on in his life. And he found a way. And but he also realized it wasn't like he was just chilling, smoking weed, recording music, and said, We just gonna keep putting this shit out and we'll figure it out. Like he figured he was figuring out along the way, but like when you listen to interviews and look at a lot of things about him, he did a lot of reading. He went to a lot of like seminars to learn more about the business. So he did his own external learning without actually having to go to school. Like he could have went to a, a college that could have taught him about the music business and then said, okay, let's apply this. Like now, granted, there's so many other factors that go into that that could lead him not to not have that, not allow him to be capable of doing something like that at the moment. But he could go and say, let, let me do that. Or he said, well, I'm gonna just invest in myself. All right, I'm gonna just buy the book, every book that I can think of that I, that I know is gonna help me grow and see the world from a new perspective. Because a lot of shit at the end of the day, a lot of great people write books about how they became great people. And if you're willing to crack that shit open, you can find you can learn a lot from another man that uh, you can learn a lot from a man that's not even alive anymore. Not even and not even just referring to Nipsey also rest in peace because it's like his it just his year anniversary just happened. But like you you don't always need that. It's just like yo, you can do other things to get to you can do other things to get to the point. But like you said, some people just don't have the aspirations or they have the aspirations but not the work ethic. Yeah. Right. And that's what it boils yeah. down to. Yeah, you need both to be successful. It's just that, it. or mm-hmm. like if you're, if if you're like a, uh, if your standard for success is just, you know, chilling out, like smoking weed every day. I only want to say that. Like, if you're if you're comfortable with this, yeah, you know what I mean. If your bare minimum isn't high, then I mean you don't really need to aim that high. But I would hope that you know somebody I know would have aspirations to be a little bit more than just the bare minimum, just getting by through life. Yeah, yeah you, it, you, you, you want to surround yourself around people who, who have the same mindset as you do. You know what I mean? Like, all three of us have individual goals to be successful, but we all, three of us, we want to be successful. We all want to have happy lives. And whether we have big families or not, the point is that we want to be successful. And that's why I feel like it gravitates all three of us as, as and we kept a friendship that we have for years because we're not about just being bums, you know. We're not about that at all. Thanks. And and, and I feel like despite uh, the blow up me and Nigel had a couple years ago, whatever like that. Outside of that, we've really been on like the same page, and all of us keep progressing and 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 getting better as as each year goes along, and. Uh, and I feel like that if you're, if you hang around 10 bums or nine bums, right, the, as the old saying goes, it makes you a bum as well. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and if you, and, go ahead. Well, 50 oh, no, I was going to, no, 50 said, it was like, yo, it was like, if you hang around niggas, if you just going to hang around people that's just chilling in the hood all day, what the fuck can they teach you? Like, yeah. what the fuck, like, if you just sitting around smoking weed, drinking all day, what can you teach? What can you teach me? You can't bring that into the place. Yeah. Like, you're only as good as those you surround yourself with. Absolutely, man. And and that's why, like, seeing what you guys do and all that is, is really inspirational. And it, and it makes me be like, okay, you know, what what are you doing? And let me find out what you're doing. Because I'm not looking for the homie handout because I don't believe the homie handout helps helps anybody. You know what I mean? I feel like, you know, passing all, pass along whatever knowledge you got so I could take that and grow into what I grow into. And I'll pass my knowledge on along to the next person and they grow into what they can grow into. But yeah, like it's you're right though. Like, you know, if you're just in the head <laughs> all the time, you you're not gonna really learn 
unless you aspire to be the top drug dealer in your local project. But but even it's not even it don't even have to be that. Like like I always tell like my thing is what I always tell people is your level of success and my level of success could be vastly different. But I'm not I won't judge you on your success because at the end of the day, like everybody's story is different, right? Yeah. So like like you like we all know people, we've all been through that like we've been through that experience in some capacity of like our upbringing may not have been the best to some degree, right? right? So right. for us, we may be the we may be the one of the few that say, Hey, I want to do this. My aspirations are is this. And like I was like shit, I was like eight years old and I had a cousin tell me, I told my cousin I wanted to be the first black president, right? She was like, you know, she's like, yo, you're never gonna be shit. Like, and like you hear shit. Like, <laughs> this is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, this I was is crazy. Eight, I was like, I was like eight years old, right? But I was fortunate enough, like, though, like I didn't like my mother provided the best she could. My grand I had like a I had a good family structure in terms of my mother, my aunt, my grandmother, my uncle all helped raise just me. But like my mother never my mother though a cousin told me that an older cousin told me this. Like, my mother never said that to me. My mother, any dreams or aspirations I had, whether it be something that my mother had never seen before, she never told me I couldn't do it. So, like, yeah. you have, but so you have those people that fall victim to that type of stuff. And, like, like the Cameron thing we was talking about, like, you want to go to school and be, play basketball and shit, you know, you know, they don't really get niggas from the hood like that to do that shit. Like, you're not going to make it to that major. But you have people that get told that and then they succumb to it and they result like I've shit, I've seen people that I went to high school with. They result yeah. to that that type of whatever that life is. And it doesn't mean it has to be legal. Some people say, Hey, I grew up moving home to home, so me just having a home and maybe just becoming a manager at at any local grocery store or a fast food joint is my highest expectation because they never seen that before. While right, you have right. the other person that's like, yo, I have the same, like, you'll have people that are siblings that could be like, hey, I had the same, we, your aspiration may have been to be at McDonald's because mom never had a job, while my aspiration may be, shit, I'm trying to be the next Oprah. Like, though you've never seen it, you just create, you figure out a way, you have to figure out how to get to that point. And it's all about yeah. just the work ethic for people. So, like, this is there, um, up, but. Is there, um, before we move on to anything else, is there anything next that y'all wanted to talk about in particular? Well, well when you, well, I actually, well, I wanted to bring up, like, that whole, because when he was talking about Lulu, right, like, I listened to that album, and I like, for the most part, I like most of the songs. I think it's, like, maybe, I think it's, that like, what's that one song, um, is it 14K or something like that? Or the intro, first song? Whatever that. It was the song, whatever that song was that he put a video out for. Oh, and, Calvin. Yeah, I didn't care for that song. Like me neither. I, I did. I did. I agree with you that because I, I wish he didn't rap like the flow that he had for that song. It was kind of like the yeah. like Amigos flow type of deal. I was like, it's the song's not terrible, but it's just like I, I, I wish that he rapped how he normally would rap on, like he did for the other song. So I like that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. care for that. Really? I thought I thought it was a good song. Yeah, like I I like that show. Are you serious? to run to. Yeah, like I was yeah. running to that shit, and I was like, oh, like I I fuck with this. Yeah, like while while I can understand, I, I honestly like it when those Griselda guys like they they do that different type of flow because only because we hear them do they they're what they do, but I like yeah. to hear them just kind of have with a little bit of variety. So I'm not yeah. I'm not mad at That's it. I personally crazy. like the song. Yeah. I, for me, it it was just like, I don't know, maybe I don't know what it was. Well, for me, you got to realize, I've, outside of anything that Conway's been featured on, I've never listened to his music solely by itself. So this is yeah, like, he has a good project out. Yeah, like Lulu, I listened to Lulu, but Calvin was the first time even listening to a Conway song ever. So like just Conway himself, and it was like, oh, I was like, okay. He's back. He's he's around too much good people, and I've heard him freestyling his freestyles before. And I'm like, he's too nice to rap like this for me. So to me, it, it was just what I, I compared it to what I heard, and mm-hmm. said, okay, this is what I heard, and then listening to this, it was for me, it wasn't favorable. Maybe if I work out to it, I might like it more because it gives it does like his all their music kind of gives me that 
that dip set back in the day, restoring yeah. the villain type of thing. Like, yeah, yeah, man. That, that early 2000s. Back. Yeah. That was crazy. Crazy thing is, I was thinking about this. I was like, this music reminds me of like that restoring the feeling. I was like, what's mm-hmm. crazy is in like twenty or twenty or twenty five years from now, right? You're gonna have a kid that's in his twenties hearing like someone, some new rapper sound like Lil Uzi Vert or Playboy Cardi, and be like, yo, he's yeah. restoring the feeling now. Like that's kind of crazy. Like when you think it's about weird. It. It's weird. It is weird to think about it like that. It's like you're like, what feeling? What y'all feeling? Like I wasn't. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but. Like yo, he's talking about that Xanax and that drug shit, man. Like, it, it that, like yo, I need that. Lil, yeah, you remember when Lord Park was out? Like, it was lit. It was like what? So, no. but now, nah, like, even with that shit though, like his his album was good overall. That Pray for Paris shit, I can't wait because that's the seventeenth, right? Or yep, seventeenth, man. Seventeenth. So like, I I can't wait to see the West Side. That West Side thing. Did you see the snippet that he put on? Um on his Instagram with the guy tap dancing. Wow. I've seen that. And, and yeah, that it's, it's on hard. his page right now. Yeah, I was going to say, I, it seems like he's really taking an artistic approach to, to this album. And I'm really interested. You know the Instagram uh, guy, Jay Versace? He's nah. like a comedian or whatever. Okay, so his thing, oh, the, he, the little black kid, right? Yeah, 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 him. yeah. So apparently, I didn't know this, but he produces beats. And he produced one of the beats on the album. Get out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> lying, bro. Hold on, hold on. I know who you're talking about. He produces music also. Yeah, he does. And, and West Side Gun came out in one of his Instagram stories. Like, yeah, this song is produced by Jay Versace and it's gonna be on the album. That's dope. crazy. That's gonna and be I, fire. Yeah, I I was surprised. Now I don't know if Jay Versace did the whole production. Or if it was one of those like collaboration productions, sometimes producers do. But like, right. he definitely tagged his name on the thing. That that's crazy. It, it probably is going. to... Honestly, it may just be one of those like it, who knows. Jay Versace may have been the guy that produced it initially. Yeah, and like he put like the the skeleton to it, and then maybe just from that artistic standpoint, like that West Side's on, that it may be some other shit to it. Like because even like seeing the cover, like. Westside has like that real artistic approach at the end of the day, like kind of like like this music. I don't, I don't. It's a music ear, but also just a art, artistic, creative standpoint. Because we're kind of getting close on time. Like, is there anything uh, that else oh. that we had to talk about that was like pressing? Yeah, well, I want to because we didn't really talk about it. Was the Drake song, the Tootsie Slide? Well, let me just ask y'all what y'all thoughts on the song first before I ask you anything else. Yeah, it it just sounds like a, I don't know, it, it's nothing like crazy, you know, it's, it's a good song, it's not a terrible song, you know, it just is what it is, it's, you know, Drake actually making a dance, and it, you know, it's cool for that, it's something for Instagram people to, you know, go and make TikToks with. Yeah, so you're not, this is one of those Drake songs that I'm assuming neither that you're just not like an entirely big fan of them. No, I mean, it just doesn't sound like. It, to me, it's just a cool song. It's nothing that like blows my mind. That's all. Because I, I like with desires, right? You were like, "Yo, this song is insane," and and you're right. It, it's a, desires was a good song. But, yeah, uh, this is a really good song. And yeah. but look, just hearing how you talk about two C side, I can tell. I'm like, yeah, this, not this is not a Nadja song. I can tell. Well, how do you how do you feel about it? I think two C side is a good song. I and. And I think the it's a, it's like the perfect kind of song for what's going on right now because of like like you said a lot of people are going to go do the TikTok things with the dancing and all that. You already have <clears throat> videos out on it too, and um, and I think it's a good catchy song. I feel like that's a song that is definitely going to chart, and that's a song we might hear on the album, you know. And, and do I think it's song of the year type shit? No, but it. it I feel like it's a definitely a song I could definitely listen to for sure. Yeah, no, it's not a bad song. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. It's just like I went back to listen to like some of his other work after mm-hmm. hearing that song. And I was just like in the catalog of Drake, it's like um it's like mid. It's some mid, honestly. Like Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like, a mid song. Yeah, like because it's good, don't get me wrong. 
it's just the caliber of who Drake is. He's just like, oh, you know, I, I, I still put out good music, even at a mid level. But to me, I think I only thing I don't the thing I don't like about this song is like I can it's blatant that he's really chasing the that whole let me get the viral success with like a TikTok song. Like when you see like Meg, right? Meg the Stallion. Yeah. Like that classy boozy ratchet challenge or whatever. That was or I don't know if that was organic or not, or if they she made the song and then they kind of gave it to someone to make create their own dance to. But it was something that didn't feel like, hey, hey, you guys, I'm trying to get I'm trying to do this. Like that's the only thing I dislike about that song. Like and I like the song, I think the song is gonna be catchy just because it's Drake, but I think it's gonna fade out early because like People are still doing like I don't know if you heard the song. Uh, what was it? Hit, hit your groove by uh, I think what's his name? Run it up, Taj. I think right. It's like some kid. I, I think his name is song. Run it up, Taj. It is like um, up, down, back, side, side, nah. up, down, up, down, up, down, get side to side. You heard this? You heard the song. I'm not gonna sing this shit. But... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we we want to hear it. What's up? <laughs> Just one last one quick thing. I don't want to take forever on it. Um, if you guys have a chance, since we're not really doing anything, you guys should really, it's free on YouTube, so you don't have to pay for nothing. You guys should really tune in and watch that The Dark Side of the Ring of Chris Ben Walsing. It's a two part. I started watching it. it. I got to the part where Jericho started talking about uh, Chris Ben said like how they were in Japan. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, when they get yeah, it's, up, it's, it's kind of interesting, man. It, Come on, listen, because uh, I know you said something about it before, but I thought it was like I didn't know it was about Chris Benoit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, do you, you remember when he the whole murder suicide yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what this yeah, it's yeah. a two part <laughs> documentary that talks about it. You know, it talks really? about yeah, the, and and uh, the the whole second part of the documentary is about the the suicide stuff. But the first part, it talks everything like, that led up to that. And man, Chris Benoit, man, you, like when you guys, when hopefully you guys get to watch the whole thing. I'm gonna watch that. Shit. It, it, it's you, the guy. You know, he has some issues. You know what I mean? And I don't want to divulge into it. Maybe we can talk about it next podcast or whatever. But I, it was really good, and and it made me realize, like, I don't know how wrestling is now with the behind the scenes politics. But back then in the 90s and the early 2000s, man, it, it was a dirty game, man. It was dirty. It was really dirty. Well, I'm not, um, I'm not check that out. Yeah. Quick question before we get out of here. Because this is a battle tonight with T-Pain and Lil Jon, right? Who y'all Oh, that's actually happening. Yeah, that's it's at 9 o'clock tonight. So uh, I guess, uh, like 45 minutes. Uh, I, I mean, I'd I, say... Go, go ahead, my I would I would say T Pain, but I mean like I think I don't know. Like it's uh, wh- how are we talking? Like how are they battling? Just like their hits? Yeah. Well, no, it's just produced. So any song they produced. Oh no, I don't know. That's actually uh, I mean I I still might say T Pain, but I don't know. What do you got? Yeah, I I I think I'll I'll take T Pain too. I think he definitely edges Lil John. But um, I, I mean, I'm rooting for Lil John though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see which songs he pulls out, man. Honestly, it, yeah. it could be an interesting little thing. Because I mean, yeah. Lil John does have some shit, you know. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a, and that's why I'm as I'm in the same place where it's like, yeah, I don't know who's going to be better. If it's going to be John or T Pain. I want to go with John, but I'm I think I'm gonna have to tip my hat to T Pain just because. Yeah. Right. Just because he he produced like he has a different sound across the board when it came to yeah. working with uh, guys and doing his own music and working with Kanye and shit like that. So and then outside of that, like just to, I don't know if y'all heard about it, but y'all know who Teddy Riley is and who Babyface of course. is, right? Of you course. know how they battle. They, they battle on Sunday. Who y'all got? Uh, I would say Teddy Riley. Yeah, Teddy. Riley. Teddy. Teddy Riley, yeah. Teddy Riley, like, I think he's involved with, like, a, a decent amount of hits that people don't, like, really think about when they hear his name. 
I, I feel it, he is. He is. I gotta go with Babyface though. Babyface has oh. like, like, cause it's a production. It's a production battle. So, like, Babyface has TLC. He has some Aaliyah songs. Cause yeah, he, he owns LaFace. Him and LA recreated LaFace records. So, damn. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. might have to. Go Yo, he has that. to be a rich dude. You know what I mean? Like, that's, oh yeah. He has to have like a like a lot of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you uh, know, I what? think I, I think he was one of the producers on Girlfriends. Oh shit! Yeah, he's yeah. a he's a wealthy man. Here, here's, yeah. here's one battle. I'll, I'll, this is probably the most talked about battle. You guys ready to hear about it? Okay. Rich the Kid versus Trippy Rare. Mm. Oh man, you know I got it. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, that joke gonna have like, like four hundred viewers, yo. <laughs> Nobody. Oh Richard god. He wants to go. He wants to go hit for hit. The trophy rap. Uh, how long is that supposed to be? Like, I'm curious uh, how how long they can do that for. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine it for too long. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be, gonna be a short set. Yeah. yeah, it's probably gonna be like, yo, you play five songs, I got five songs, and that's kind of it. Like I honestly, I would have to age that out to Rich the Kid, though. Yeah, yeah, same so? here. Oh, yeah, Rich yeah, the Kid. I, I agree with you. Yeah, he actually does have... like have some songs that were hot. Yeah, and also like he, I only got to go with reason I'm going with Rich the Kid. I think Trippy Red makes better music than Rich the Kid, but like Trippy Red's go- not Trippy Red, but Rich the Kid, he's going to be able to have New Freezer. That's gonna. Yep. That's gonna. That's gonna be like. That's gonna end up being like, here, Trippy, you play your biggest hit, and this is my biggest hit, and my biggest yeah. hit is probably a better song overall. Not even just numbers wise, it's just a better song also. But then he probably has music with Dexter and the Migos, so like it's gonna be. I don't know what happened to Dex, but like drugs probably, probably. Yeah, yeah, he was he was supposed to be that guy at one moment in time, like him and every yeah. guy. But yeah, so I would have to. I'm gonna have to give it to Trippy Red, and I know I don't want to keep dragging this on or nothing. But y'all saw where uh, Boot Gang found God, apparently. Yeah, he's been uh, yeah, trying to do better. Not... Yeah, no, I, I didn't. I don't know. I didn't yeah, know like, any, anything going on with him. Yeah, I just saw a video on Twitter earlier today, and he was just like, you know. Um, I like. I realized the life that I was living was like it was only going to hit me to a, deep, a bad, a deeper, a bad future. Um, like I know I did a lot of stupid stuff, but I don't want to be identified as Bunk anymore. I want to actually be like as Joey Gabbana. I'm actually some. Um, it allows me to brush away who I once was. I think he's like sober now. I don't think he does drugs. He's like he was like I just want to. He's like I just want to give my thanks to God. He's like I've written books. Like he's like a whole nother person now. So he's gonna get rid of his face tattoos. That's the question, because yeah, we'll face see. tattoos the face tattoos still tell me Boom lives there somewhere. So <laughs> um I don't know, but yeah, I think that's I think I think we should be good with this. I think we should end it on this note. Okay. All right. Well final question of uh, the evening, fellas, before we say our goodbyes. And just yes or no answer. Whole lot of red comes out twenty twenty. <laughs> I thought you were gonna ask if we were watching WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> whole lot of red uh, twenty twenty. Just yes or no. <laughs> no. What is that? <laughs> now do you want to explain? <laughs> uh, whole lot of red is supposed to be the new title of Playboy Cardi's album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go with yes. So, <laughs> I'm gonna go with yes because he's gonna need the. I money. think he should. If it doesn't come out in 2020, then it needs to drop immediately in 2000 in in 2021. I think it's I I think it's gonna come out. I think it might come out because um, I saw some. I looked at the comments or whatever about the situation. Apparently, like where, wherever he got caught at is like not the spot to be at. Like it's it someone. All I know people that are from Atlanta. Or wherever that he got arrested at, they said like, "Oh, he's really about to get a really bad case because they're probably going to charge him by the bullet. Like he's probably going to get maybe, yeah, he had a full clip. So like, oh god, 
Oh, yeah, man, he was he was scrapped, man. It was like three. It was three guns. I think it was three guns <coughs> and like a bunch of packs of runs and some Xanax and some other drugs. Like, yeah. yeah. So he was probably selling too. Probably so. I I guess that that baby that baby noise wasn't so, wasn't working for him, man. <laughs> he about to be like, um, you remember when six nine? You remember when it was like, yo, when six nine goes to jail, they're gonna be telling him sing that verse from Fifi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably gonna tell Playboy Cardi speaking that voice again, yo. Mm, Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. What's that, y'all? <laughs> uh, any any closing words? Uh, stay safe. That's it. Stay safe. I I'm off this week. I gotta I go back to work next week. So stay safe and stay in the house. Oh, well, yep. Yeah. Uh, just second that. Everybody, stay safe. Make sure you follow the highly advised podcast. Make sure you follow, you know, each of us individually as well. And um, just to the listeners and and all the viewers or whatever. We've got a highly advised playlist coming out too, and uh, more things on the way. That's it. All right, thanks, y'all. Um, have a good one. Stay safe. Be uh, be safe out there. You've been highly advised.